My brickling order arrived. Thank you. All right, let's see which one of them is this one. Oh, hello there. Oh, thank you. You know, I was wondering when this book was going to arrive, and... That's a pretty sick axe. Where did you... Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait! You fools! You thought that I made this channel just to talk about Lego and fantasy lore. You fell right into my trap. <laughs> it was all a ruse. All to lure you in to talk about the one true board game filled with pure chaos, destruction, and lots and lots of awesome. Welcome to Brick Wars. In this series, we'll be going through what is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated war games for something that has such a gigantic possible community, especially the LEGO Castle one. Because let's be real, we all pick up our knights and have them war each other every now and then. We'll be looking at the rules, how to play, and in this video we'll look at the introduction and lore of it, using the book as a reference. Before we start talking about Brick Wars, I think it's only paramount that we dive into the concept that I doubt a lot of you are familiar with, and that is the concept of a war game. So, what is a war game? The definition of it varies, but generally a war game is a simulation of an armed conflict that is adversarial in nature. That means it has two or more bands, and doesn't involve the use of actual troops or armaments, but representations of them instead. They all operate under a setting and a scenario which sets the tone of the war game. For example, Warhammer Age of Sigmar has a lot of fantasy elements like wizards and dragons, meanwhile Flames of War is set in World War II. There are three scopes or levels of war games according to Wikipedia, which determine the lens in which we'll be looking through our game, basically how large or small scale we'll be focusing on the given conflict. These are tactical, operational, and strategic. Tactical level war games are those that represent live combat scenarios, usually a single battle. In tactical war games, you control units of soldiers, which have distinct armament, capabilities, and general abilities. The spans of these battles usually last a couple minutes to a couple hours in the game's canon. Operational level war games focus more on campaigns rather than single battles, where you have an army, and battles are usually determined by computation of some sort. Strategic level war games are those ones that represent entire wars, and the player addresses much higher concept ideas, like economics and diplomacy. With all that said, the best way to summarize what we'll get into is that Brick Wars is a tactical war game that uses LEGO or other construction toys to represent soldiers, armament and terrain. With this definition, we'll embark ourselves in the other determining topic of a war game, the setting. Which leads to the most important question, what is Brick Wars? Brick Wars, written with a K, get it right, is a tabletop war game where instead of buying expensive plastic minifigures to make armies and battle others, you buy expensive plastic minifigures to make armies and battle others. Alright, I'm not making my case here. Essentially, Brick Wars is a tabletop war game in which you and other people take control of armies of minifigures from any construction toy, which winds up being usually Lego, but it doesn't have to be, and make them fight senselessly for your own entertainment. Usually it's recommended that the battlefield is brick built so that you can destroy it accordingly to what's going on in the battlefield. It'll give each team a set of objectives to accomplish and battle away by having died decide their fate. The reason I'm making this series is mainly because I notice how there's really no YouTube tutorials on how to play it, or even much YouTube talk about this genuinely fun war game, especially from the LEGO community, considering that most of us as kids pretty much did this with our figures anyway, albeit in a less organized fashion. I think that this is a bit of a disservice to the game, so I'm going to do us all a favor and throughout this series I'll teach you how to play the game to the best of my ability, and hopefully by the end of it, you too can pit your army of clone troopers against your lion knights, or maybe have the dead to rise the dead and attempt to take over the world. This war game rule set doesn't just come with rules, but also with a whole lore introduction to go along with it, which we'll have a look at so that you can understand the kind of world this game is set in, and the kind of game that we're going to be reviewing. Consider this a tone check of sorts. In the beginning. Well, more like in the middle, because every good builder knows that ignoring building instructions is the actual way of life. In the middle. There was a spaceman, which was considered in the Brick Wars universe as the most lethal being to ever exist. When it was created, it was such a powerful point in the canon that quite literally the entire timeline shattered. Castles, space, Nexonites, pirates, even the trash themes like city were all thrown into a time loop plunged into pure chaos. Even as things tried to reconstruct themselves around the absolute chat of a spaceman, he broke them apart before they could even reform. This threw the whole world into a continuous brick apocalypse that created a compound force of awesome faster than it could digest it, like your stomach after a good bunch of Taco Bell. 
From there, the timeline basically twists itself, shatters, reforms, all for the spacemen to destroy and start over. The spacemen basically turned the reality into a boot-looping iPod. It would start over just to crash, just to reform again, each time with new factions popping up with their own cannon. From there we have all manners of ridiculous stories, like the Poop Invasion, where mysterious counterfeit minifigures led by the, and I quote, unreliable clutch power of Nega Block Tricks flooded the Brickverse and almost caused off the Brickpocalypse after the spacemen that arrived to smash the 2002nd Brickverse into existence didn't manage to amass enough force of awesome for a reconstruction. From the invasion rose a slew of heroes like Major Natalia of the Assyrian Star Empire or Baron von Bragalot from Neo-Prussia. Yeah, we'll go into that in a moment. They rallied their armies and managed to push off the invasion and hold until the spacemen came back and defeated Nega Blockstrix. After the Poop War, every hero had enough force of cannon to make their own worlds, and slowly, anti-heroes and twisted villains started to form. And at the dawn of the new reconstruction, the four horsemen of the Brickpocalypse besieged and threatened the Brickpocalypse. Peace, order, stability, and poop. Okay, okay. This section probably sounded like the insane ramblings of a madman, and it probably is, in all honesty. But I recommend you read the full story in the book. It's genuinely a silly and funny read, and that's where I was heading with all this. Brick Wars, as much as it is a set of rules for a war game, it's an endless celebration of mayhem, and it stands firmly in the belief that all rules are meant to be broken. If there's a right way to do things, Brick Wars stands in firm opposition to it. This is why throughout this video you've probably noticed the several grammar errors. They're not, but rather that's how the rules describe them. Bricks become bricks. This introduction becomes an introduction. And acts of inconceivable, horrifying violence which are considered awesome become awesome. This game portrays minifigs as the thing we've always envisioned in mass, let's be real. Small, violent little buggers who all they wish for is to either destroy their enemies or die in the most awesome way possible. While throughout this series I'll probably be using castle factions with traditional medieval weapons, nothing is stopping you from having your army of bicycle riding knights fighting the Star Wars clones. In fact, it's encouraged for you to come up with as ridiculous a set of a scenarios as you could possibly can. The focus of the game is unwinding, having fun, forming your own little cannon with a K, and not to try to win every battle. In Brick Wars, winning the battle is pointless. What matters is to have minifigs die in as many awesome and silly ways as you can possibly think of. I think this game is a fun one, and I'm genuinely surprised when I notice that a lot of people in the castle community have never heard of this game. It's silly, it doesn't take itself seriously, and it's full of fun and interesting rules. And the best of all? Take a look at some of the art for the book. Take it in. Does the art style look familiar? Does the name Mike Rayhawk strike a bell to you? Well, if it doesn't, let me show you the mind behind the game, who is none other than the former art director of Illustration and Lego. And you might have seen his work around before. He worked on a lot of the art for Knight's Kingdom 2, and was also there when working on the concept for the first seasons of Ninjago. Mr. Rayhawk's work is genuinely fantastic, and his war game is no different. I really recommend you to check through his stuff in his website, and I recommend you get yourself a copy of Brick Wars as you go along with these videos. While I'm going to go through the broad strokes, having the book at hand makes it much easier. Well, well fellas, that's all I have for you today in this video. We've seen the introduction to what we're about to get into, and if you enjoyed what you've heard, then tune in for more. I'll be going through all the rules of the game so that you also can play by yourself or with friends. If you like what you saw, consider leaving a like on the video. You can also check out my channel. I talk about a lot of things, both related to LEGO, as well as roleplay, war games, and some video game content sprinkled in here and there. I will also leave a link in the description if you want to pre-order the Ragnablock edition of Brick Wars, which comes with a nice PDF copy and the physical book, whenever it prints. Without much further ado, this has been Gyojo, and see you all next time.